Thank you for the opportunity to address you today regarding good governance protocol for MSCI chapters. This is Mark McCarrens, the General Counsel of the MSCI Institute, and uh, I wanted to provide a quick overview of some of the highlights of our chapter leadership manual as they relate to good governance at the chapter level. First of all, the chapters are all independent, standalone, freestanding corporations, albeit nonprofit corporations. That means that the organization itself has a legal status with the state of incorporation. Although I have a listing of all the states of incorporation of all the chapters, you should know for which state you have been incorporated. And in connection with that, the underlying document, really your contract, so to speak, with your members, are your bylaws. I would strongly encourage all the chapters with their chapter council at some point in time to not only locate your bylaws, but to review them as a leadership group. That would serve a couple of purposes. First, it would refresh your recollection as to the roles, responsibilities, duties of each of the chapter leaders. Secondly, and maybe more importantly, <clears throat> it may highlight that there are certain board practices that you're engaging in that you're not engaging in consistent with the bylaws. In that sense, those activities would be branded what's called ultra vires, meaning you don't have the authority if it's not spelled out in the bylaws. An example would be this. Let's say you have a standing committee that you call the executive committee that really runs your chapters, irrespective of the chapter officers. If the bylaws do not provide for such a standing committee or an executive committee, those acts are really outside the scope of the chapter's authorities. That is why I would suggest that a secondary purpose of doing a bylaw review is to make sure that your current governance practices conform to your bylaws. The second point that I'd like to make an overview before we get into the individual slides is that as a chapter leader, a director officer of an independent, nonprofit, separately incorporated chapter, each and every one of you have what's called a fiduciary duty to the organization. That fiduciary duty is the highest standard that the law recognizes. And we, we will have some slides later on that detail uh, more precisely those individual duties. But in short, you have a duty of loyalty, of due care, of responsibility, not to self-deal, uh, to the organization. And you own that duty at all times. Delegating that duty to someone not on the board <clears throat> or assuming some other board member is carrying his or her own weight is also not a proper interpretation of your fiduciary duty. If you're an officer or director of an MSCI chapter, you have a fiduciary duty. You cannot shed or offload that duty. And it is, as I said before, the highest standard that the law acknowledges. With respect to incoming uh, board members and changes of board composition, I think it's very important to make sure that all your incoming board members are exposed to these good governance principles and get to see the chapter leadership manual. This is certainly one reason why we're engaging in this chapter leadership webinar concept so that if you're unable to attend our annual or semi-annual chapter leadership meetings here in Chicago, uh, there will be a quick and easy way on the web for new members to refresh or gain experience about good governance protocol at MSCI and also provide refreshers to existing board, level, board members. Lastly, although risk management is not maybe technically a good governance issue, it certainly in practice is, because as board leaders, officers with fiduciary duties, it is also part of, parcel of your responsibility to make sure that external and internal risks to the chapter are managed properly. So for example, uh, if you entertain some sort of fundraising activity at the chapter level 
that was inherently dangerous and that there was not proper insurance that could cause liabilities for the chapter and someone at some point in time might question your judgment as to why you even endorsed such a program for the chapter. I would say at the outset though that with respect to insurance the concept of directors and officers insurance and commercial insurance generally for the chapter we are having a separate webinar component on that topic uh, led by Brian Steidel from Aon. So generally for you those of you not familiar with uh, board functions uh, and again, you must defer to your individual bylaws because they may spell these responsibilities out differently. But typically there is a board chair, a treasurer, a corporate secretary, and several or some vice chairs. Again, the bylaws will tell you the specific responsibilities of each and whether other additional uh, officer positions have been created. However, all of these folks are fiduciaries. The board chair obviously has a large responsibility not only to make sure that the chapter is functioning well, but to make sure that the bylaws are being adhered to and that the other board members are functioning, functioning well as a team. One way that the board chair can help execute those policies is to delegate certain matters to official board committees. Now again, your boards and chapters may be small, your bylaws may not provide them, but I would encourage you in your bylaw review to look at this issue and see if there are some committees that should be standing committees that would allow your board to act more effectively uh, going forward. Maybe it's governance, maybe it's finance, maybe an audit committee, but again, that is a way for the board chair to delegate, at least in the short term, some of those immediate responsibilities to a smaller group of board members who are supercharged, if you will, with those responsibilities. Again, it's very important, though, that your bylaws provide for the establishment of those types of committees. As I indicated at the outset, one of the first things I think that board members should do is locate and review your bylaws. Uh, assuming you are in compliance, uh, there may be a need for amendments to those bylaws to reflect uh, some things, some practices that you're engaging in that are not reflected in the bylaws. Again, that's a relatively simple task of amending those and your chapter council can help. With respect to minutes as the chapter leadership manual allows. Minutes are a part of the corporate formalities that must be maintained to make sure your corporate existence is uh, respected by uh, third parties in the government. So when you have a board meeting or an official board committee meeting, minutes should be created and someone should be charged with creating those minutes. It may be your chapter council, it may be your corporate secretary, it may be your chair, whomever, uh, minutes need to be created. And those minutes should be created as fact-based. They don't need to be long. They don't need to be tomes. They don't need to be narratives. But they need to be good fact-based summaries of the matters discussed at the meeting. As importantly, there needs to be a custodian of those minutes. Maybe it's your corporate chapter council. But someone needs to take custody of those minutes and make sure that they're in a safe place. With respect to meetings as well, quorums, meetings in, in your bylaws will reveal what constitutes a quorum. You maybe think you're having a meeting, but if you do not have a quorum in attendance as set forth in your bylaws, that meeting will not be recognized by your state. I said at the outset that we would have a slide later that more fully describes the fiduciary duty. This is that slide. Again, I cannot underscore the importance enough of this commitment to fulfilling your fiduciary obligations. Policies, again, may not be covered in your bylaws, but might be good governance to have certain policies on certain topics. For example, we have an antitrust compliance policy that can and should be adopted at the chapter level. 
no reason why you can't in your minutes record the fact that you've conducted the meeting in accordance with your antitrust compliance policy and you've made a commitment to adhering to that policy in future meetings and programs. I don't want to steal Mr. Steidel's thunder from Aon, but one of the biggest issues threatening all uh, entities uh, today, nonprofit and for-profit, are cybersecurity risks. Uh, the fact that you may be collecting credit card information on members, you may be collecting personal information on members uh, through the web or otherwise, potentially subjects the chapter to a hack or a cybersecurity risk or threat. Mr. Steidel will address uh, the existence of insurance for that event, but putting aside whether that's an insurable event, having some sort of recognition or policy on cybersecurity might be a good thing for the chapter to have. And again, I think Mr. Steidel at Aon may have examples of those types of policies. Lastly, no matter what type of policy we're talking about, whether it's no harassment, antitrust, cyber, someone needs to be charged with uh, administering those policies within your organization and the board and becoming the custodian and, uh, and repository for potential complaints about violations of those policies. A related subject is obviously risk management. Detail that at the outset. Identifying internal and external risks to the future of an MSCI chapter is a fundamental element of good governance. Again, you have many things on your plate. You're raising funds through golf outings. You're concerned about good governance. You're doing a bylaw review. You're thinking about cybersecurity. So again, lots of things on your plate, and we don't want to overload you. But at some point in time, having a session throughout the year of your chapter leadership, identifying internal and external risks to your organization uh, would probably be a good uh, project. I've compiled a list of kind of top 10 uh, takeaways from this presentation and a partial summary of all the materials in your chapter leadership uh, packet, and let me just run through them uh, 1 through 10. So with respect to maintaining your corporate formalities, uh, MSCI had reached out to an organization called CT Corporation, who for a small annual fee, I think currently it's about $289 per chapter, they make sure that you are in what's called good standing with your state of incorporation. That means your corporate existence is recognized, both from, for third parties and vendors and suppliers, as well as the government. And it is critical that any organization, for-profit or non-profit, be able to locate its certificate of good standing. Now, the good news is CT has shouldered that responsibility that's been offloaded from the chapter leaders. And again, for this nominal annual fee, they take care of that. And at any point in time, if you wanted to get that document, if your chapter council can't locate it, uh, CT can uh, for you. Uh, we've talked, too, about bullet point number two. At some point in time in the near future, conducting a bylaw review with or without chapter council to determine whether you're acting in accordance with your bylaws would be a very a good project. Three, again, referring to CT Corp., there are entities called registered agents, and that is in the event that the chapter uh, needs to receive a legal communication, maybe the chapter has been sued, maybe there's a claim, maybe there's other some state filing that's due, all those matters automatically go to what's called a registered agent. Again, to offload that responsibility to the chapters and be recognizing that chapters have uh, ebbs and flows of chapter leaders coming on and off the board, uh, CT Corp has become your registered agent in your state. So in the event that there's a notification of a claim, a lawsuit, that would come to CT Corp and that would then go to the chapter president uh, through CT Corp. I talked earlier about uh, maintaining your corporate formalities, your minutes, your meeting books, your corporate agendas, I just ask, who is the person within your organization that's going to fulfill that function? 
It could be the corporate secretary, it could be the chapter council, it could be the chairperson, whoever it is, somebody needs to be the custodian of those records. Five, I understand uh, firsthand the issues involving making sure that chapter council attend all official corporate uh, chapter board meetings. Uh, many times chapter council are busy, uh, maybe they can't attend, but maybe they could attend by phone, <coughs> excuse me, or via webinar. Uh, but not having chapter council present in some capacity at your board meetings is not uh, recommended. Obviously, preferentially, having chapter council there and maybe even serve as minute taker is good practice. Uh, as of this date, all chapters have legal counsel, and that's what MSCI here nationally in Rolling Meadows uh, strongly suggests. If you uh, need help with locating a uh, new chapter council, just contact me and I will do my level best to help you uh, do that. But these chapter legal counsel really provide value. And again, uh, some of them are very busy people and you need to give them as much notice as you can of upcoming board meetings or events for which you seek their attendance. Uh, calling them the night before saying, uh, by the way, I know you're in Plano, Texas, and you need to be in Houston tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., not picking on the Texas chapter, but just using it as a hypothetical, is probably not a good uh, practice. Uh, once you get your meeting agenda of all the upcoming year meetings, getting that to chapter council and saying, here are the meetings that are coming up, here's the ones we expect you to attend and where, uh, that's going to ease that situation uh, tremendously. Number six, that uh, really uh, coincides with my earlier discussion about making sure that you're governing in accordance with your bylaws. If that's not your top priority uh, as a result of this webinar, it, it should be up there in the top two or three. Let me detour just a little bit, and I had indicated I might approach this in the antitrust compliance uh, segment of the webinar, but I thought it would be more appropriate to talk about it here. There is a document which you have access to, which is also in your chapter leadership manual, called the Chapter Branding Agreement. This is an agreement that each chapter has signed with National, which in short transfers and licenses our intellectual property, the MSCI IP, to your chapter. It allows you to use our trademarks and intellectual property uh, without a fee. But there are certain conditions and restrictions to that, one of which is that you use our marks in an appropriate fashion. There are detailed guidelines not only in the chapter branding agreement, but even more detailed guidelines in the chapter leadership manual on this point. For example, the trademarked uh, Four Diamond uh, logo of MSCI uh, has a certain uh, specific orange color associated with it. It is important that in your communications external uh, to the public that you use that type of orange color in associated with, your, uh, with the MSCI mark. Again, your chapter staff liaison can certainly assist you with this area. Number eight, I haven't talked about tax-exempt filings yet. We need to talk about it now because it's a separate and distinct matter from good governance and your corporate existence. Whether or not you're a valid nonprofit corporation in your selected state is in some ways a parallel activity to getting IRS and state tax-exempt uh, uh, um, recognition. Excuse me. So someone in your organization, maybe your corporate secretary, maybe the audit committee, maybe your chapter council, maybe the treasurer, needs to take responsibility for making sure that all the requisite annual filings are made with the IRS and any specific state tax authority. Uh, that means that people then donating money to your organization are entitled to take advantage of your tax-exempt status. It may also mean that locally you're able to purchase goods uh, as a tax-exempt uh, organization and not pay state or local tax on them. In any event, this is one area that we at National have not procured an outside service to monitor like CT Corp. Put another way, CT Corp has nothing to do with your tax-exempt filings. 
that is completely incumbent on the chapter to make sure that your tax-exempt filings are made at the state and federal level. If there were such a national service that would provide that, we would endeavor to use them uh, for all the chapters. But unfortunately, there is not such a service, and CT Corporate does not do that. Therefore, annually, and you may have recently received notification from your staff liaison, we do kind of a manual checklist that each chapter has attempted to make its annual tax filings, both at the state and federal level. Uh, primary person to contact on those issues would be your staff liaison, but again, that's incumbent on you as a chapter leader to make sure that all those requisite filings have been made. And there's certainly a group of people that can help you with that, including your chapter counsel, your outside accountant, uh, or whoever is preparing your financials. But that, again, needs to be red flagged. And it is here uh, as number eight. Uh, ninth, we've talked about risk management, identifying internal and external risks. That's kind of part of the responsibility going forward. The question then becomes, once you've identified those risks, uh, who has responsibility for them within the organization? Typically, it would be the board, and it may not be a bad idea to periodically, within your board meeting, to just talk about this issue of risk management and see if there's any new discussions that could be had about new risks that have developed or how you can minimize existing risks, uh, risks. Lastly, we have a network of strong MSCI staff liaisons who should work closely with you at the chapter level to provide information and assist you where we can. Certainly rely on those people. Uh, they're very helpful. And again, uh, any questions about this pre presentations or outside governance issues, feel free to contact me or better yet, contact your chapter council as I am in com communication with those folks uh, quite regularly. Again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, address you today on good governance issues. And um, thank you again for your great work and participation on behalf of the Metal Service Center Institute.